let's get started. I'll show you how this is going to work. All right, I want to walk you through the setup that I have in my truck here. I have two Yaesu radios, FT100M and a Yaesu FT8900. And both of the bodies are under the seat, and the 8900 has the signaling cable connected to it all the time, and it comes out here uh, below the seat here. I also have in the car all the time, I got this little pouch, and in the little pouch, it's got everything to go to support connecting to WinLink. I have the signal link, and the signal link, the pinouts for this are already preset. It's all set up for this. It's set for 9600 baud, although it will down, down rate and work 1200 with the uh, gateways that I might try to connect to or other stations I might connect to that don't have that setting set up. So I've got that in there. I have cables in there all the time too as well. And the USB cable to connect the signal link to my laptop. In addition to that, I have the HT cable that connects up to a Kenwood handheld, which will also connect to you know most of the other radios, the Woshans that I like, any tones, uh, Quashang, any of the other ones that use this standardized connector. So I can not only connect with my car radio uh, that's here all the time, but if I have a handheld or if I need to pick this all up on the go, I need my laptop, I need this and I need a handheld, I've got a, a portable station that I can take pretty much anywhere I want. Other stuff in this bag, I got a good programming cable for those Kenwood style handhelds, um, as well as an extra audio connector if I have to connect to a different radio and the jumper pins, the tool to open up the signal leak if I need to make some changes in the field, along with an extra cable. Behind the seat here, I have my connector and I connect it to my signal link. So now I'm plugged into the radio and I'll set the delay and the transmit and the receive, power the device on, connect my USB cable to it, to my laptop. Obviously I'm not gonna do this while I'm driving, but a passenger could if they needed to. Fire up my laptop. It works a little bit better from the passenger seat, but it works here as well. Open the windows here. I'll fire up my radio. Find the wind link frequencies that I have pre-programmed in here for several different of the frequencies, as well as I could um, also uh, just program it into the VFO manually. Log into my laptop, launch WinLink Express, open up Avara FM session, check my levels, I may adjust this a little bit, check to make sure that the laptop still thinks the, uh, the right sound card is in use, which I think it may not be, nope, it's the right one, and then I'll go ahead and uh, Start a session. And I got a lot of messages coming in, so I'm going to just download one or two of them for our example purposes here.
And there you go, there's a session completed. It's pretty easy, it's always set up to go uh, at any time. Uh, at the same time, I could flip over to the other side of the radio and uh, have a conversation. Um, this radio will support um, two connections at a time. That's a nice feature of it. Uh, plus, this will do 70 centimeters, 2 meters, 6 meters, and 10 meters. I do also have it set up to do the 70 centimeter side. I'm not going to show you that right now. Uh, I hope this was useful. Um, you know, any, any car that has a mobile rig that has a data port on it can be easily set up to, to do this. All you need is that signal link the cable in there and again I leave that cable just in that thing all the time so all I need to do is plug the single link in quickly to it and I'm up and running. Thanks a lot. Hey thanks a lot everybody for joining us. My name is Chris Mattia. My amateur radio call sign is Whiskey 6 Alpha Hotel. This is Wave Talkers Live. This is episode number 99. Today we are talking about mobile wind link and I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues David W0DHG. Dan NR6V and Scott KM6 RFB. And uh, we're gonna ju jump right in today to our check-in that we uh, we always do. So if you have your copy of WinLink, go ahead and fire that up. And what we're gonna do is uh, if you uh, send us a WinLink check-in, send it to all four of our call signs. Those are W0DHG NR6V. KM6 RFB W6AH and our tactical address Wave Talkers. Use the standard WinLink check in form and down in the comments section, let us know what is your favorite mobile radio and why. Let's do a quick walkthrough of how to send in that check in. So I'll switch over to my PC here and I've already got a copy of WinLink Express up and running at this point. What you're going to want to do is come over here to the upper left corner of the window and click on the new message button. Uh, then you're going to click on the button at the top that says select template. When you do that, you'll get the template manager. Go ahead and click on the little plus sign next to standard templates. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find general forms. Go ahead and give that one a click. And down near the bottom, you will find the winlink check dash in dot txt. Go ahead and select that and give it a double click. If the demo gods are with you, you should it should open up your web browser of choice. With this open, you're gonna to wanna to come up here to the top under station for date and time. Give that a click in that first field. What that's going to do is it's gonna set your form to be your computer's current date and time. That way your check-in will show up in the correct uh, time slot. We'll go ahead and say okay on that. The next field is two. This is where you're gonna put in all of our call signs. They'll also be added into the chat for you to be able to just copy and paste. But those are W0DHG, NR6V, KM6RFB, W6AH, and our tactical address, Wave Talkers. Just separate each of those with a semicolon. In the from field, this is where you're going to put your call sign, then uh, station contact name, that's your first name, and the initial operators. Go ahead and list the call signs of any other operators who are sitting there watching the show with you, whether it be here in our live audience inside of our Zoom call or live on our YouTube channel. Uh, thanks a lot for watching there. That would be uh, great. Here's our session type. This is going to be an exercise, so go ahead and select that. Then under service, select whether or not you're sending this in via Amazon amateur radio or via shares for the band let us know if you're sending it in via telnet uh if you're using the internet hf vhf uhf and then for the session type be sure to select the type of session that you're sending this in via um whether it be packet pack tour uh vara hf vara fm or mesh and when we go and map all of these check-ins later in the show we'll be able to see the difference between those who have sent in their check-ins via the internet and also those who have sent them in say via vara hf or vara fm or packet we'll be able to bring those up as colored pins on the map app. Here's the location information. This is where you want to let us know where you're checking in from. Your latitude and longitude should be automatically filled in for you by WinLink, either from the GPS that you have connected to your station, or it could come from your grid square, which you entered in when you went ahead and signed up for your WinLink account in the beginning. Here's the comment section. This is where you want to let us know what your favorite mobile radio is and why. After you type that in, uh, be sure to paste that into the chat, whether it be on 
on YouTube or here inside of the Zoom so everybody can see some information as to what you think your your favorite uh, mobile station is. Down at the bottom, hit the submit button. You will get a couple of pop-ups that'll spring up here. Just keep clicking OK. Those things go away uh, in no time when you do that. When you're all finished and you get a blank browser window, just go ahead and close your browser window all of those data should then be entered into your form right here. You just go ahead and hit the post to outbox button. When you do that, you'll see your outbox here increment by one, and then just come up here to the top for the session type. Click the drop down here, select which type of session you're gonna be sending your traffic in via, and then once you've selected it, hit the open session button. You then just hit the start button, and if the demo gods are with you, your traffic just goes out, and suddenly you'll get uh, any new traffic that's coming in. It looks like we've got check-ins that are coming in from around the globe. So I'll go ahead and download those. Later in the show, we'll come back and we'll map all of those check-ins. So you'll be able to see that we received your check-in during the show. In the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and jump back over to uh, our slides and let's get into today's topic, which is mobile WinLink. Now, uh, what are mobile radios? I guess that's a, a good place to start. So mobile radios, um, we're going to talk about some of the advantages, disadvantages, and the things that you really need to know when you're trying to set up WinLink specifically to operate with a mobile radio. So when you're talking mobile radios, you're really talking the form factor more than anything. It's a small, compact uh, radio. Uh, usually the display is either on the front or it's got a removable faceplate. They're originally designed to be installed in side of a vehicle, but they're a lot more flexible. And we'll look at a lot of different examples for that. So a lot of what you're looking at is the form factor. The next factor, which kind of defines mobile radios is typically there's more power than your, your typical HT or handheld radio that we talked about last week. So handhelds usually top out at about five watts, whereas your mobile radios typically will be 25 or 50 watts. Um, some mobile radios will even go up to 100 watts, depending on the case capabilities and the specs that you have. Um, one thing about the power capabilities, when you're setting up to operate WinLink, even though you have that higher power radio, you are going to want to back the power down initially, especially if you're sending via, say, VARA HF or VARA FM. These are, um, these are modes that are designed to have uh, very low signal to noise ratios. So if you crank up the power too much, you may find out that you're over modulating your system and you might be slowing your traffic down. So if you're having trouble making your connections, oftentimes one of the, the tips to making your connection go a lot smoother is to go from high power down to medium power or maybe even down to low power to be able to make that connection. And sometimes you'll see your speeds increase quite a bit. When you're looking to buy a mobile radio, you definitely want to look for a mobile radio that has either a data port, and that could be in a variety of different formats, um, such as uh, uh, a lot of the, the Yesus and the Kenwoods all have a six-pin DIN uh, on them. Uh, other radios will have a, a DB9 connection, and others will have more of, the, more of the more modern radios will have an actual USB connection directly on them. That really helps you in making your connections between your radio and your computer when you want to do any digital mode and especially when you're operating with WinLink. <clears throat> Other things that uh, come into play with mobile radios is many of these radios, not all, but many of these radios can be all mode and all band. And that can be really important, especially if you're into emergency communications. If you find a mobile radio that you're capable of doing HF as well as VHF, UHF, sideband, all of these different formats, FM, so that you're able to send traffic via any means that you need to when you are in the field. And that can be a real, real advantage to you. Other other things that come usually with mobile radios is almost always they, they ship with a mounting bracket for the radio itself. And this can be really helpful when you're putting together either a go kit, you're going to mount the radio in your vehicle, or maybe you're just putting together a, uh, a set for your desk and you want to mount it, say, underneath of a shelf. You'll see some examples of how you can use the mounting brackets as we walk through today's slides. Um, Mobile radios are typically a lot more rugged as well than your typical handheld radios and certainly more rugged than a lot of the base stations that are out there, which we're going to be talking about next week 
on our 100th anniversary episode of Wave Talkers Live. So that's kind of a quick rundown of what mobile radios are. And they are very similar to handheld radios. And when you start talking about how you're going to use mobile radios with Winlink specifically, um, you're, you're going to use a lot of the same tools that we talked about last week. So things like the Digi Rigs that are out there. Um, Digi Rigs are great because you can connect a variety of different radios to them and you're really only swapping out the cables for them. The other super common one that we really like is the Signal Link. Uh, this again, it's a USB device. It's an external sound card. You're able to uh, have some some controls on the front of the unit, which is very nice compared to the DigiRig. DigiRig, you're doing it all inside of software. Signal Links, you've got those controls on the front, so you can make a little bits of adjustments here and there. And so that may be nice for you. You can swap inside of the inside of the case. You can change the jumpers inside so you can map it to various different radios and you can just swap the cables out. So a very flexible device. Um, one that we didn't talk about too much last week is very similar to the Signal Link. It's actually um, a, a little bit higher end than what the Signal Link is. These are by Master Communications. And you can go to, uh, Scott will put a link in the in the chats for, for them. Um, these are the DRA boards. And these these are great, great um, interfaces that connect via USB, very similar to the Signal Link with the controls on the front as well. Uh, very good high quality for doing um, for doing WinLink, and a lot of the shares operators have moved to these as their uh, interface of choice when they're doing VARA. Um, other interfaces you're going to find that are common to mobile radios are going to be things like your TNCs, the Cantronics, and there's a variety of these that are out there. We talked about these briefly last week, but part of the challenge with using um, many of these different devices with uh, mobile radios is that, or uh, handheld radios, is that they're so much larger than the handheld itself. When you're talking about a mobile, they kind of pair very nicely with the size of the mobile radio. Pactor becomes an option when you start moving into mobile radio rigs. I know these are very expensive, uh, but the speeds that come out of them are quite high. Um, they're very robust, and in certain conditions, they are going to outperform pretty much anything out there. Um, although you are seeing VARA HF specifically uh, compete very directly in some situations and sometimes even exceed the capabilities as to what Pactor does. So it's just another tool for you to have have in your toolbox, depending on the specific needs. For instance, if you are a shares operator, you are going to have a Pactor modem, and you likely will have some way to do VARA as well. As an amateur, you may or may not have get into the, the realm of the Pactors. Another interface that we didn't talk about last week, and, and these are, um, you can find these on repeater builders. Uh, they're may, these are the, um, the RA boards. Um, it has a, a DB9 connector on it, and these um, plug in specifically into the Alinko mobile radios into the, the DB9 connector on the back, and they've got a little USB adapter. These are a great little teeny tiny sound card. Um, I've got, I'm gonna actually switch over to my overhead cam because I have a, all of these uh, here. This is that, that RA board that's there. You can see it's really small. One of the things that I really don't like about this board is when you when you do have the, the Alinko, so this is the Alinko DR135, and you can see on the back of it, it's got that DB9 connector back here. When you plug this thing into that connector, one thing that you'll notice is that there's not enough space that's left between the shape of the circuit board and where these holes are to be able to put a locking screw in those. And so it's very difficult to get a locking screw in there to lock this in place. So if you're building this into say, um, some sort of a mobile uh, deployment, uh, you may have a challenge with this uh board coming out. However, for a gateway, for a VHF gateway, this is an excellent little setup. These, uh, for a two meter gateway, these DR135s are really relatively cheap. And this is pretty much one of the cheapest interface options that you can go with. The other options that I have here, I do have my signal link. I've got my DigiRig. You saw each of those last week. I also have my, um, Pactor. This is a P4. It's the DR7400. This is the lower cost of the two uh, P4 Dragons. Now that uh, amateur radio, we're allowed to use both Pactor 3 and Pactor 4 for the higher speeds. These start to make a little more sense. If you do go with one of these, the with the lower end um, 
uh, packed to our modem. I really suggest getting the Bluetooth board that's inside of it. I, I went ahead and added it as an, as an add-on, and I have found that I prefer connecting my Pactor modem to my Surface via Bluetooth and then just have one cable that connects the Pactor into whichever radio that I'm operating with. It works extremely well, and it's really nice to cut down some of your cables uh, when you're doing that. This is a uh, Cantronix, uh, one of the TNCs, and, and that has a bunch of serial connectors that are out on the back that you're gonna, you may need to connect up. A lot of mobile radios will also have built-in TNCs, such as the the Kenwood uh, D710G. That's the one that that I use. And when I'm when I'm using my Kenwood, if I'm gonna use a packet with it, I just use the the Kenwood cables that that come with it. This is the the it comes with a serial DB9 cable on it, and then it goes over to the pack to the uh, the Kenwood uh, DB6 cable on the back, and this is what's plugging into the radio itself. In order to plug this into pretty much any modern computer, though, most are not having the serial ports on them anymore. So you will need, at that point, some kind of USB to serial adapters. These are excellent ones. These are um, they're the trip lights. If you find an older one, you you may find it as the key span. The model is pretty much the same, though. Uh, the model on these is the, um, uh, what is it? It's the... Uh, the USA 19QW, and on the, the new trip light, it's the 19HS uh, for high speed. Um, these are really good, and they're very high quality to be able to make all of those connections. They're pretty reasonably priced, and you can just take your serial connection cable, plug it into, into that, and then plug this into your computer, and then this end into your radio if you've got that built-in TNC uh, for some of those. So a nice solution that's there for you as well when it comes to a lot of the other kind of setup stuff uh last week we talked about all of those we did a very uh, thorough run through and we've even taken that initial set where we walked through that whole run through we kicked and we kicked it out as its own dedicated video you can find it on our youtube channel it's called winlink handheld radios it's the overview video and then we even separated out all of the different demos that we did last week so they're all uh broken down as smaller videos that you're able to to watch if you want to get a, a deep dive into that. Um, but what what really changes when you start talking about mobile radios with Winlink is you, you're able to open the doors to all of the different Winlink modes. Uh, depending on the radio that you have, you can open up HF, VHF, UHF, Packet, Pactor, Robust Packet, Winlink, RDOP, VAR HF, VAR FM. You get access to all of those. And that really, if you if you look at it globally, you're looking at approximately 500 HF um, RMS gateways that are scattered around the world. And that's roughly about 1,000 VHF and UHF RMS gateways globally as well. About half of those are all located inside of the United States and the other half are located outside. So there's pretty much a gateway that you should be able to hit most anywhere. We'll talk more about gateways later in the show, but but before we kind of go back into, um, into the mobile radios, I wanna draw your attention to, to one other thing and that is on the on the winlink website itself um there's a if you click on the tools section so let me bring that up real quick and we'll go back over to the walk up if you go to the winlink website itself and right up here near the top there's a link for tools and if you click on tools what it does is it brings up this map of the world and it shows you where all of the different Winlink gateways are and you're like you're probably looking at this going hey Chris that's that's not 1500 gateways that's because we're right now we're only looking at the Pactor gateways up here it's really hard to see sometimes but up in the top there's a little radio button and you can come up here and you can click on say packet and then this will refresh the map in just a second here if the the internet demo gods are with me. There we go. And so these are, are all of the packets 
packet. This is the VHF packet radio um, Winlink gateways. You can also see, we'll click on the VARA. This is the VARA HF gateways that are scattered around the world and uh, VARA FM. And you can kind of click around to those different ones. If you're an operator within a different system, you can also change the service code up here. And you can see, for instance, just uh, gateways that are dedicated to say MCOM or, or some other service code that you may know that you operate with on a regular basis. So as you're, as you're clicking around, one of the things to really kind of look for, I'm gonna go back over here to the VARA setting and I'm gonna just double click a little bit to kind of zoom in here. So you can see all of these gateways. Now, many of these gateways, you'll see a little H on them. And what the H means is that's a hybrid gateway. And what's super cool about hybrid gateways is that they will oftentimes have both a VHF, UHF gateway, not all of them, but many of them, but they have their, their gateway is set up on HF such that any traffic that comes in, if there is no internet connection, it'll automatically route that traffic back out even without the internet connection. So if you can get into an HF gateway, and especially one of these ones that says H on it, then more than likely your traffic, regardless of what the state of the internet is, is going to go out and is gonna get routed to where you need to be able to get it to. So that's just a really nice little aside. And by jumping up to a mobile station, you really can start to access and take advantage of many of these stations that are around the world. So as we the other piece of a mobile station is really how flexible they are to be able to deploy them in many, many different ways. So this is a picture that I took during my technician class. So I'm, I'm taking my technician class for at the very beginning and there they one of the instructors brought their station and they set it up here and it was this mobile station that was set up this is an icom 7100 you can see over here in the corner this is the uh this is the the body of the radio is in here and they had the power supply all mounted in this is a little uh a little case to be able to just mount those two together and it uh, the the mounting brackets the mounting holes on the side of the mobile radios mount directly into that and i just thought this was so cool as a way you can take this radio kind of with you anywhere and you had all the power to be able to do whatever you whatever you wanted it, this one has the batteries external and and so forth but that was that was that kind of started me down this path of seeing various implementations of mobile radio installs and then i would figure out as i as i became more experienced and i would you know get a new piece of equipment i i got a, a kenwood d710g as a as a mobile rig and when i would set it up at different events i would oftentimes set it up in that kind of a format oh we'll just we'll create a little stack here i was using winlink i was just using the built-in tnc that was inside of this and i just had a simple cable coming off and it would plug into my laptop and i would be able to send my winlink traffic uh, via uh, just the radio and and really nothing else um, besides you know having the antenna and power and so forth there so later on, I, I saw this go box that was set up and this was really nice. You can see I put some arrows here because this is a real nice, it's a small vertical Pelican case. It was very nicely designed, very well laid out. This has the, the mobile radio that's back here and it's mounted right in the surface. But I put the arrows in here to show here's the signal link. They have a USB port that's drawn out to the outside. So you're able to plug a computer directly into that and it attaches into the signal link. Over here there's the data port the data connection port that was split off from the radio and there's a little switch so you can do voice or, or data and I just thought this was so nicely laid out as a way to get in here there's a little antenna port everything is just cleanly done very well thought out and uh, so uh, of course what am I going to do well I'm going to go through and I'm going to try and do my own version of that now instead of building out I didn't have the skills to be able to build out the top plate or do all of the wiring so I got a plastic ammo can I picked it up it was like i don't know 10 or 15 or 20 dollars or so and got some different adapters started plugging them in i'd seen some other examples of some of the battery boxes that had been created and so i just figured well let me go through and just build this out myself and when i built it out i built it for my kenwood and this is pretty much what i've carried my kenwood around ever since for for many years now inside of the box um here's the body of the radio that sits in there i keep a 30 amp hour battery uh, in there so i 
I can run the the Go Box pretty much indefinitely. Um, it'll run for basically a couple of weeks uh, on just this one battery power. Um, if I'm just doing casual use, if I'm doing an event, it'll easily get me through a full event, uh, even two days, uh, just on this battery power. I have the the cabling for for the packet station. This is some some audio cables that are here, but I do have the the packet cabling that just comes up and it's always just tucked right in there. I have the little uh, the little the little adapter in there, so all of that is just, it fits. And this is mounted right with the edge of the bracket, right on the edge of the the case. And then I also have enough room still inside of here. I can put the head unit in, I can put the microphone in, but I can also put my signal link in there and the cables. So now I'm able to do Vara FM as well as pack it all just with this really compact, very small box uh, to be able to, to work with that. Um, and I've deployed this in many different areas. So I've, I do a lot of different event support. So this is one of the marathons and, and I was running both uh, um, APRS as well as WinLink and using the setup for voice. And I just take my laptop, set it out, pull a couple of cables out, and it all works uh, pretty well. This is another um, marathon that I set up and operated with. And, and you can see one of the things that I've, as I've kind of grown as an operator, my gear has also kind of expanded as well. And so it kind of tends to spill out of the box a bit more. Um, the, the head unit here, I've just gone ahead and just pulled the body out of the out of the box. And I'm using the box now as just a battery box at this point. And I'm just kind of spreading the gear out. But that that one very simple mobile unit allows me to have a lot of flexibility as to how I go through and deploy with it. Um, and it was at one of these events that was the next little bit of inspiration that I had. Now, this is a vehicle, this is by an operator who's now a silent key. He was a really good friend of mine and I worked, it was one of the very first marathons that I worked and I was partnered with him. Um, this is a remarkable vehicle, by the way. He took this thing uh, off-road. He drove back and forth across Africa with it. Um, it is a, it's a remarkable uh, uh, rally car that he built out. But what, what really kind of inspired me with this was you can see the ham radio antennas that are here off the back of it. And uh, typically hams, as they start getting into mobile radios, can start getting them installed in their vehicles, their vehicles start looking a little bit like a porcupine, several different antennas kind of hanging off of it, depending on the type of uh, deployment and type of usage that you're planning on getting out of it. Inside of that vehicle, you can see down here, just um, uh, in the middle, just in front of the stick shift is where they had the head units for their radio installed. Now, he did have this rigged up so he could do Winlink. He literally just had a cable uh, very similar to the setup that you saw David in the very beginning use with his vehicle as well. So you can mount the, the radios in a place where it's convenient to be able to work with them, primarily work with them as voice radios. And then when you do need to operate, say, WinLink or some other digital mode, you can simply have the cabling that runs around into a convenient place so you can pull it out and start working with it. So with this in mind, I went ahead and just started modifying my own vehicle. So this is my Ford Ranger, and I had a um, I needed to drive back and forth across the country and had to go from California back over to the East Coast and bring back a load of, of equipment with me. And uh, so I rigged up my truck for, for the trip, and it's pretty much stayed rigged uh, in a similar way to this. The cabling is all there. I don't leave the radios in all the time. But I, I installed uh, three different antennas. Um, I have up on the top of the roof rack, I've got a 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna. Um, this initially was used for packet and 2 meter voice. Now it runs Winlink and any other uh, traffic on it. This is actually a tri-band antenna. It's the it's the aero tri-band antenna that's set up there. Um, up on the front of the vehicle, I mounted an HF um, mono band, uh, 20 meter sideband uh, uh, antenna. This is the the um, also the diamond antenna. 
Um, and I use this a lot uh, when I'm traveling, if especially on a long road trip, if I rig up the HF rig in the truck, then it gives me the chance to be able to, to operate and work on this trip across the country. I was going through New Mexico and I was talking to a station in Japan uh, on, on this rig mobile. It was, it was really, really cool. I was driving up through the Central Valley and I was talking to a, to a pilot in there in a plane that was about uh, 100 miles off of Seattle uh, one day. So it, it worked really, really well. I also had my CB uh, rigged up in the truck, especially doing long road trips. Oftentimes, uh, having a CB in the truck is really helpful because then you're able to uh, communicate with a lot of the truckers that are on the road and uh, get a lot of local information. So as a communications idea, this worked extremely well. Now, inside of the vehicle, this is uh, an, an idea of how I've rigged it uh, mostly in the past. I have um, I have my two meter 70 centimeter this is my Kenwood and I will just pull it out of the go box I'll install it here in the vehicle as well um, this is the KX3 and the pan adapter for it and so I would use these uh, for operating on HF I'd usually put the amp somewhere in the in the back so I would have 100 watts to be able to work with I would just mount the, the CB up here in the front. And then I put a little small angle bracket. I just mounted it right to the to the dashboard. And I'll oftentimes just hang whatever HT that I have with me to that. It ends up being a really nice way to run like APRS or simply just have your HT handy to be able to operate with. Now, the mounts that I use for this are the, the Lido mounts. And uh, these are these are a really nice solution. Let me go ahead and switch over to the overhead cam, so you can see this is the this is the arm that's in the vehicle. It mounts uh, down on the floorboards. It's just a bolt that goes in the. Uh, under the seat bolt and then it's a pretty flexible arm the front of these mounts have these two little pins this is what the the Lido mount how that how that works and then you get a bunch of little adapters if I can get this off let's see which way does it go there it goes it goes off like really sticks on there sometimes. Um, there's a little slot that's in, in these so that the mount can just attach on. And then with that mount, what you do is you get various different brackets. So this is a bracket for the KX3 radio. And so I can just uh, bolt that to there. I've also taken, I've got a variety of these different Lido mounts and I have one that I, um, on the bottom of the 705, there's a quarter 20 thread and I've been able to mount the 705 to the Lido mount if I was going to use that in my vehicle as well. So that that creates a really nice way to mount a variety of different radios, and they all stay pretty much on, on this pole. I don't leave them in the vehicle all the time, um, but if I'm going to do a long road trip, I'll go ahead and set those up like that. Um, and then it's very easy also, as David was mentioning, it's not really good to be focused on what's going on on the radio while you're driving, so it's very easy to turn this entire pole around and if you've got a, a passenger with you, especially if they're a ham, they're able to access and operate all of that gear as well. Um, as part of the these Lido mounts, um, Scott uses a Lido mount in his truck as well. Um, there's a couple of other manufacturers that do similar kinds of things. There's the Ram mount system. Whichever system you go with, um, just pick one and it'll it should uh, be able to work for you. Uh, let me uh, let me play the next little uh, clip here. Right, I guess that's my cue to talk about my mobile Winlink project. Uh, I uh, I started this project a couple of years ago and got kind of hung up on it and uh, stopped it. And then when we were talking about doing this uh, this episode, it got me back onto it and started again. So um, 
it's a work in progress. I'm almost done, but just couldn't get it done in time for the uh, presentation today. Um, so really, part, pardon my dust because this is really dusty. Partially from sitting forever and partially just from me uh, hurrying to get it done. So my goal on the project, the primary goal, was to get use of my center console in my truck. I had uh, the two radio bodies and a scanner body in the uh, center console of my truck, which meant I couldn't use the console very well. So that was the main goal. Uh, the second one was to make it more accessible so I could service it uh, the way they were crammed into the center console of my truck. Uh, made it really hard to uh, to get to them. For example, if I wanted to work WinLink to get to that data port on the back of the uh, 8900 radio was was tough. So that was my second goal. And then I wanted it to look professional. I'd seen some professional installations that encouraged me to, uh, to go ahead and do something that was uh, pretty professional looking. So this is my back seat the way it is now, and it looks pretty unassuming with the seat down. It looks just like it does uh, in any uh, Tundra pickup truck. With the seat up, however, you can start to see where I'm going with this. I've got uh, currently the two radio bodies. Uh, the scanner is not mounted yet. Uh, I've got to find it. I put it in that proverbial safe place and haven't been able to find it. So I've got to make a concerted effort to find that. But uh, that, and, and you can see the other hardware components, and we'll look at that a little more closely here. Um, one of the things that really held me up on this was how to get the data and speaker wires from the head units up front back to the, uh, uh, to the radios. And uh, finally, I ended up... Um, taking a piece of uh, one and a half inch PVC pipe, running it through the table saw to cut it in half. And then with great difficulty, I slid it under the carpet between the two points that you can see the arrows and you can see the cables coming out by that uh, upper arrow. Uh, so I was able to do that. Uh, you know, just as things go, there were all kinds of little things that obstructed the path. And uh, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, and I thought it was going to be difficult. But finally, finally got that done. Here are the two radios, and here's a first example of the dust I'm talking about. Um, the uh, Yesu 8900 on the left, and on the right is a um, TY, or um, I'm sorry, an Alinko DR638, which is a Part 90 radio. Um, I made sure that I had relays and fuses for each radio. They're all done separately, and you can see the Anderson power poles uh, where the radios will connect into the uh, the system there. And then on the left, you can see the what looks to be a larger gauge wire. It really isn't. It's just closer to the camera. But that's the trigger uh, from my switched uh, key switched power so that when I switch the uh, engine power on, uh, it powers the relays and turns the radios on. Uh, I've got a, a master's communications DRA board uh, that allows me to work via FM and packet and uh, pretty much any other digital modes I wanna work. The radio heads themselves are mounted kind of similar to what David has. They're mounted onto the dash um, uh, just with the uh, 3M VHB tape, which if you haven't used it, is really amazing double-sided tape that has really good holding power. Uh, so I've got the, the Alinko DR638 on top. And again, that's a part 90 radio. I, I really got that when I worked the medical radio network for Baker to Vegas, uh, because we were using both ham frequencies and commercial uh, radio frequencies. And that radio is capable of doing both. Uh, and then I've got the uh, Yesu FT8900, which is a quad band, uh, two meter, 440, uh, six meter and 10 meter. And um, uh, main reason I chose that for this installation was like some of the other Yesu radios, it has a uh, data port on the back 
and you can do uh, voice on one side of the radio, data on the other side of the radio without making any menu changes, which is really handy if you're doing, uh, uh, say, a net where a net control operator is, is giving you permission to send your digital traffic and you need to communicate back and forth for that. So a good radio, unfortunately, no longer made like the 8800 uh, Yesu, uh, both discontinued, but both really excellent radios. Uh, the scanner I have is a uh, uh, Bearcat uh, BCD996 XT. And uh, for a while, they made a remote control head for it. Uh, they stopped making it, and I had a very difficult time finding the remote control head. But I watched uh, eBay for a while and finally found one. Um, paid more than retail for it. But, um, you know, when you're the only one out there, you can get what, what you want. Uh, my antennas are mounted to my uh, headache rack on the back of the truck, just uh, NMO mounts. And uh, I've got uh, the center is a um, uh, basically a tri-band 800-440 two-meter uh, uh, scanner antenna. And then uh, right now on the uh, left or closest to the screen, I have a two meter uh, whip, which also radiates pretty well at 440. And then on the right is actually a dual band uh, antenna. There's another, another look at them. Uh, uh, the mounting them to the headache rack was convenient, kept me from having to punch holes in the roof of my truck. Uh, the only trouble is uh, it pretty much keeps me out of parking uh, parking garages. Uh, as far as operating positions, uh, trucks are really flexible for this. Um, this is just sitting on my center console, and you can operate from the, the comfort of your, uh, your seat there. And, and uh, if you've got any kind of weather, uh, it allows you to be out of the weather and, and actually works pretty well. Another option is just on the tail uh, or on the uh, tonneau cover uh, in a standing position, uh, works real well. And then lastly, you can work on the tailgate, pull up a chair and, and work on that all day long. So what's left for me to do? Um, the wire, I've got a number eight wire pulled from the battery, comes right off the battery. Uh, I've got that pulled already, but I've got to make the final connections on that. Uh, I need to dress the wires. I, I ran the antenna wires long because I had to put connectors on them, and I did not want to have to do that uh, kneeling in the back of the truck. So I left those long, and actually uh, Bill Cost, WA6SW, uh, did the connections for me on those. And did a really nice job, but uh, there's some extra length I've got to coil up and the power wires are going to have to be trimmed to, uh, to length. Uh, I want to redo the control head mounting, uh, even though it works pretty well. I've got an idea for uh, um, 3D printing a, a shade uh, that goes over the radios to give me uh, a little less glare from uh, bright sun. Uh, I want to build a uh, aluminum cover to go over the whole body, radio body and fuses and all that to protect it when the seat is up. Um, I bought a, uh, something I've wanted for a long time. I bought a, uh, a metal break, a sheet metal break to do that with and uh, look forward to playing with that. And then lastly, probably the biggest job of all is I've got to clean it all up. So that's my mobile installation, and I'll send it back to Chris. Hey, thanks a lot, Dan. Um, Roland, who joins us from Germany, sent in a sent in a quick video uh, at walking through his mobile station that he has. His is set up for Pactor. Let me go ahead and play that for you. And uh, he's speaking in German, but I've turned on the English translation uh, captions for you. So here we go with that. Hopefully the audio is going to come through. 
So the audio is not going to come through, uh, but we can see the captions that are coming up. So he's got a pack tour station set up. He's got his laptop in his vehicle that's here. He's going to come over here and show us here just for a second the um, – antenna tuner that he's got set up in the back he's got the icom antenna tuner and then he's going to go outside of the vehicle and show us the antenna setup that he has uh, rigged up he can operate from either the front of the vehicle or in the back with that here's his uh here's his antenna notice he's got those four really long uh counterpoise wires that is able to just drop down he runs those out 90 degrees um, from each other and creates a, a really nice ground plane uh, for that antenna system that he's got. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in to us, Roland. So other ways that you're able to deploy a mobile station and things that you, uh, at least as for me, as I've been uh, walking through uh, my time as being a ham here, um, this is the mobile station that's set up or the Winlink station that's set up for the ham radio operator at the Ventura County EOC. And you can see that that their setup that they use, it, they have the, the power supply down here at the bottom, a Cantronics. Uh, they do a lot of packet. They've got two monoband uh, packet stations that are set up here. And then up on top is where they have the their Kenwood for their voice with the two different sides on it. And they just have a laptop that comes out in the front to be able to, to operate that. Um, this is what the station that's set up at the state EOC looks like. And as you, you kind of look at this, there's a lot of different radios with a lot of things going on here. This is inside the radio room. But as you kind of look around, you start noticing all of the different interfaces. Many of these radios are all capable of doing either WinLink or some other sort of digital mode. And that entire top shelf are all mobile radios. Now, these are not mounted in any kind of crazy way. They, they just stack up nice and neat to be able to operate and organize for your station, for your for the operator to be able to cleanly get at whatever needs to be communicated. As we look at some other resources, this is inside of a Magoo. It's a, it's a mobile unit. All of the radios that you see there in that rack are all different mobile radios that are all set up. And the, on the left-hand side, that's an ACU, which allows uh, the, the folks operating that that vehicle to be able to cross batch and cross repeat any of those different mobile radios that they need to. And they can set up a lot of really flexible communication network uh, if they get deployed at a at a. Um, with their with their agency and so this is this is another cal oes resource that's there many ham groups whether they be uh, an aries group an acs group a racy's group an oxcom group they'll have many of their mobile radios that are set up inside of some kind of a mobile command center usually it's a a trailer or a larger vehicle that that the members of their team are able to to operate their net control out of inside many of these are set up in some kind of way like this there's usually some sort Sort of a desk that's set up for operators to be able to sit in there and operate usually some large screens to be able to collaborate information on and then many of the radios are all mobile radios that are all mounted usually using the the mobile bracket they'll usually mount them underneath of a shelf or underneath of a cabinet so that the operator has a place to be able to sit and work at the table as well as operate the radio many of these stations get set up so that there is a signal link or some other digital interface that's also connected and usually there's just a simple cable that's there to be able to plug in a laptop and be able to operate. This is the mobile command center for Ventura County. And this is one of the net control operators that was sitting here. And you can see there's the mobile station sitting directly underneath. It's just mounted on the shelf. And it creates a really nice way for the operators to work however the operator is finding themselves most comfortable. And almost uh, always right here to the side, you can see there's another signal link that's just mounted underneath of there. So any of these stations could be uh, windlink stations if they need to be. 
Here's another way that mobile stations can oftentimes get deployed. So this is at uh, one of the marathons, and this is one of the one of the operators that was on one of the chase bikes, and they have their mobile station in their backpack. They just have a, a microphone that comes over over their shoulder, and they're able to operate. Now he was mostly operating voice as well as running APRS. This next operator uh, took it a step further. They put a little trailer on the back of their bike, and they had a full mobile station uh, back there mounted in the back there and they could even run winlink if they needed to if they wanted to stop they get a laptop back there they could just plug in uh and and to be able to operate they had their antenna running off the back of the trailer which ended up being really nice they just be able to route the the microphone up there and they have the control unit is mounted up to the handlebar so they can see the head unit while they're while they're biking along this is more of a commercial installation of a mobile unit, and this would be one that would be uh, built out to a little more durability, but the idea is still the same. Uh, you've got the radio that's in here. You have a way to be able to power the radio, the speaker that's built in so you can hear the, what's going on over the, over the microphone, over the, um, over the radio, and there's even a mag mount that's attached to this. Now, these did not have uh, uh, any digital interfaces that you could add, but it would be very easy to be able to add something like that to these. Another way that you'll see mobile radios commonly mounted, you'll see them mounted on a board of some kind and then have all the various different components just screwed down to the board so you can take the whole unit and just kind of easily move it around um, and, and have it so you can deploy it very quickly, set down, plug a laptop in it and operate Winlink or whatever different digital mode that you want to operate. But you're not limited to do something really fancy like that. Many operators will choose to simply use their backpack, carry the different gear with them for their mobile uh, station, just keep it in their bag and be able to set it out, deploy it as they need it. Just pull the gear out that you need when you need it and not have so much of a rigid structured uh, deployment. Uh, others will take the approach of taking that Pelican case. Pelican cases are excellent cases. Um, those are the ones that I use all the time for most of my expensive gear that I'm going to carry with me uh, to somewhere. They really do do a great job of just protecting all of your gear. This operator's chosen to basically just stack all the gear inside of the Pelican so it's well protected. But when they get there, they can just spread out the station that they need to. Here you can see they're using uh, one of the Yesu mobile radios. They've got their signal link running in here. They even have a mesh node that's set up in here so they can operate however they need to with this fairly small compact case. Um, Others will take the approach where they'll build out these more uh, uh, well-designed gator boxes. Here, this was by uh, KK6DA. Uh, David built out this kit, and he's got his signal link in here. He's got a, a modem set up so he can do his, his mesh networking and so forth. He's got micro uh, speakers that are in here so he can really hear what's going on with the radio. A nice little uh, way to be able to take the cable that comes out and just plugs into the laptop. And there's a slot even for the laptop to be able to slide into this to be able to operate. It's a really nicely designed, well laid out uh, station to be able to operate both voice and uh, digital, uh, especially for Winlink. This one's uh, a case by uh, David, W0DHG. Let me, let me bring you up. You want to tell us about this? And I know you've got some other things you want to share with us. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's a, a box I built a while back. Um, uh, it's actually, it's not a Gator box. It's a SKB, but, um, same, same concept. That's a full length rack bat box. Uh, in that box right there, there's, a uh, uh, ASU FT897 and it's connected up digitally. There's a signal link in that box as well, uh, as well as a, uh, the TYT 9800, which is kind of the clone of the Yesu FT8900. So in that box, you got all mode. You got two sides of UHF, VHF. Uh, we got digital connections uh, for that uh, as well. It's a great box in the field. Drop it on the table, plug it in, hook up some antennas and power, and you're ready to go. You had some other boxes you were going to show us? Absolutely. I, I just got a pop-up about the language I was speaking. I'm going to try to get rid of that <laughs> here. Pop that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to show you some other stuff here. I'm going to switch over to the other camera. Um, I got a, a, another box that's in progress right now that I've been working on. Um, this box you can see here, this is a Gator box. Um, and um, it's mostly done, ready to go. I've tested it out a couple of times. It's, it's field deployable. Again, the, the concept behind this box was I wanted to be able to take out in the field 
um, not only a voice communication box, but I wanted to take out some some heavy windling capability. Often, um, if and when we have a deployment for uh, areas in the Los Angeles area, I'm typically sent up to a hilltop. Uh, you saw my vehicle early on in the show. Um, I'm four wheel drive capable. I can get pretty much anywhere where the road's open or I can get to it. So having the ability to take something up there, put a wind link gateway up, um, as well as have voice comms um, is very useful. We've got two Alinko radios in this box here, um, two meters and 220. Um, both of them, you'll see when I flip it over, are ready to go for uh, digital modes. Um, I do have a signal link. The signal link's hooked up to, this is the Yaesu uh, 8900, again, quad band. So um, 70 centimeters, two meters, six meters, 10 meters, um, as well as another Yaesu. This is um, FT7800, uh, two meter, 70 centimeter radio. So I can deploy uh, three different radios here. Uh, with digital modes, whether it's Vara or Packet, um, as well as have some voice stuff that I can monitor at the same time and then switch back and forth either way, depending on what's useful given the deployment. The nice thing about these boxes is once you get everything mounted in here, it's ready to go. You take off the plate, you deploy it, you hook it up to power antennas. And I, I tend to keep the power antenna separate from these um, because I don't know how long I'm going to deploy. I may take a really big battery. I may take a generator. I may take a little battery if it's going to be a short amount of time. You can also see in this box mounted under here, um, there's one of these little B-Link puck PCs. It's all in here, ready to go and connected. I'll flip this over for you to show you what the back looks like. Again, everything's mounted up in there. It's all pretty much ready to go. Um, we've got the power poles. It's ready to plug into to my power source, or I can separate them off depending on what I want to support. Um, you connect up your antennas to it. Um, and then there's the USB connector for the signal link that I can pull out to the front, connect to a laptop, and then I'm ready to go. The other thing I found that's handy with these um, boxes is I get these little mesh bags and I and I mount them Velcro to the to the cover, and inside these bags I have uh, microphones, all the accessories that I need to connect these radios. So it's always with them all the time. Pop it off, and I have it. It's ready to go show you another project that we've been working on. Uh, this is a project, pull it in the screen here. This is a project we built for the city of Calabasas. Um, they wanted to have some field deployable Winlink clients and gateways. And this is the gateway variety. Um, it's all built out. There's the Alinko radio. We use the, uh, the rim boards for these. Um, there's the puck, the puck PC. We put a 12 amp hour battery. Plus, there's um, a port on the outside to either charge it externally or add another battery. Um, there's an antenna port on the outside. We can literally take these boxes, um, put them somewhere where we have a Wi-Fi wi signal, and we know the Wi-Fi signals and these they're marked in our community um, that the uh, the puck PC already knows about, so it can already connect to it Wi-Fi. We plug it in, we turn it on, we deploy this out, and then we have a little Winlink gate, uh, gateway that we can set up or use it as a DigiPeter, depending on what the uh, the issue is we need in the community. And it's really nice because it's self-contained. Once you turn it on, you can close the box up and it and it will run in this fashion. Put the, uh, the antenna connectors on the outside. Again, there's a, a port for the battery as well. We can take this anywhere, drop it somewhere, um, and it's ready to go. And uh, and yeah, speaking of gateways, um, we did a whole series on setting up um, Winlink mobile radios and, and becoming a sysop uh, gateway operator. Um, these boxes, we, we kind of set up on that. If you want to look at the series that we uh, put out there, Chris has got that on the screen, uh, episodes 57 through 58, 59, 60, 61, and 67, kind of walk you through the whole process of what it takes um, to take that plunge into becoming a, a gateway sys -oper operator. Yeah, this is the um, this is the gateway that I have, at, uh, my VHF gateway that I have. I, I've just got the little B-Link computer. This is the, the two meter or the VHF gateway and just that DR135 uh, radio, the same one that David has in those boxes that he's built out for the city of Calabasas. Uh, it works as a great little gateway. Um, it's nice and small, nice and compact, 
and does an absolutely excellent job. So with that, let me go ahead and switch back over to the the walk up. Let's check in on any of the the last uh, check-ins that have come in. If you haven't had a chance to send in your WinLink check-in, go ahead and do that. I'll just do one more check. And if you have found any of this information helpful, be sure to go on to the YouTube channel, like the video. It really helps us uh, in making sure that we can get this video shown to more people. It really, really helps us. And, and leave us a comment if you find that, uh, let us know what you thought about the the setup and, and the mobile hey, Chris. rigs. Yeah. So one thing, um, talking about the Pelicans and the soft cases, this is the R40 Pelican by um, Pelican. Um, really nice. This is what I keep my um, my Nighthawk in and my DMR hotspot. I posted a link in the chat. Um, they make three different sizes, the R20, R40, and R60. They're all just this is the medium size so this is removable so you can put stuff behind here it does come with a tray i took the tray out to make everything fit um it's waterproof and it locks up real nice and they they're not that expensive but they are super handy to have and again this is the r40 they come in different colors excellent thank you very much on that scott let me uh just make sure I've got the zoom, the uh, everything set up here to come back. Let me come back over to me. Oops, changed it around. There we go. Okay, so um, make sure you've sent in your Winlink check-in. Let's bring up the map and see where everybody's coming in. I'm going to come up here to the top of the menu bar and just click on the little globe icon, and that's going to bring up the maps and CSV uh, forms window and you just at the top you want to select which form that you want to map out now because I've received all of these forms you sent them to my call sign you sent them to our tactical address then I've got all of those check-ins and we'll be able to map all of those together but if you want to see how this feature works for yourself just come down here and select the messages icon the messages option and that will map all of the winlink messages that you've received into your account if you receive any of the Win link forms that support the mapping feature you'll find listings for those here inside of your list so i'm going to come back over here i'm going to make sure i'm going to select the win link check dash in v5 and then i'm just going to hit the display map icon and i'm going to blow that out to full screen now when we're in full screen mode i'm going to right click and drag uh, to pan the map over and we'll just look and see where the check-ins have come in uh, we've got uh, terry zl1hog joining us down in new zealand and then it looks like uh, this looks like uh, this is franz uh, joining us from um Austria. We got a couple of operators, uh, Sierra Alpha 7, Juliet Mike Foxtrot, and it looks like Sierra Mike 7, Yankee Tango November. Uh, both of those joining us from, looks like Sweden up there. And uh, you can notice that their pins are showing up in this, uh, this kind of purple color, and there's several others that are showing up like that. If I come over here to the filters, uh, currently I've got my filters set so that um, any station that's sent in via VHF or VARA FM should be showing up in purple. In a little while, I'll switch these over uh, so we can see all the stations that have checked in via HF and bring those up as, as colored pins as well. Let's zoom in on North America. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the zoom in button a couple of times. Click the right mouse button and drag. So click and drag with that right mouse button. And that lets us zoom in over here on North America. Let me roll over these uh, RF check-ins that have come in here. And uh, we'll just kind of roll over these. And I saw Lloyd's check-in uh, pop up there. Congratulations on getting your um, Winlink gateway set up. And uh, I heard it was quite the success at the uh, at the event that you guys held this past week. Uh, very nice for that. I'm just going to roll over these other ones that have come in via the VHF. Let me go up and change the map now. I'm going to change the filter type. And we'll change instead of being VHF. HF. Uh, we'll change that over to HF and we'll also change the VARA HF and change it or VARA FM and change it to VARA HF 
it will say save and you can see those map pins just change color instantly and uh, we can see the other stations that have sent in their traffic via some form of either hf or specifically vara hf we'll just roll over each of those it's great to see all of those check-ins coming as well in via those modes. Let me uh, change the filter now. Actually, I'll just go ahead and roll over these other stations that are here. Make sure everybody's able to see their check-in that they were able to, to send in, see that we did receive your check-in. It's nice to know that uh, people get their, uh, their traffic sent in to us and we are receiving it all the way through. So we'll just roll over several more of these as we kind of work our way around the country. Looks like there's King down there in central Texas. Roll over these stations. Let's move, zoom in a little bit here into the Pacific Northwest because uh, I know we've got quite a few stations that are up in that area. Here we'll actually hit these uh, stations here in Arizona first. A couple down here, down in the southern Vegas area, southern Nevada, and in the Piedmont. Let's come all the way up to Pacific Northwest up here. Pick up these other stations. Make sure everybody's able to see their check-ins that have come in. A couple of stations right there. There we go. And we'll come on down all the way down south one more time. Oops. Sometimes I don't drive so good with this. Zoom out a little bit. There we go. There's one there. We'll come on down to... Get these stations here in the Piedmont area. That are right there in the Sacramento area. And we're going to come on, on down to Southern California. Where we've got quite a few that are showing up here as well. KJ6IJJ, great to see you there. Craig and Logan, a great supporter here of the show. Really appreciate that. And all of you who, who join us, if you find this stuff really helpful, consider going on to wavetalkers.com. Use that buy us a coffee link. It really helps us uh, keep everything up and running with the show. Uh, with that, let me bring the guys back up to screen real quick, and we'll go around to kind of wrap things up for this week. And uh, episode number 99, guys, that's uh, that's quite a few that we've we've done there uh, for this next week. We're going to be doing episode 100 and uh, we're going to be looking at HF stations. Uh, David, any closing thoughts from you today? Uh, great walkthrough of the, the stations and so forth that you got. Yeah, thanks a lot, Chris. Um, there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of possibilities. Um, you probably already have a radio in your vehicle. You are just so close to having a Winlink station that you're driving around with every day. It's really easy. Mostly it's probably just adding a cable um, and a, and an interface that you might already have. Um, we, we looked at a bunch of different go boxes as well as just, you know, a case that you carry and you dump a bunch of radios on a table and use them wherever it is you need to do. It's, it's really easy it, to do. Um, we didn't go into a lot about the antennas and whatever, but we'll look at that at some some future upcoming episodes as far as what to do with field portable antennas. And I know we've covered that in the past. Um, but as I would always say, you know, get your gear set up, get it out there, test it out, play with it, have fun. Thanks, David. Dan, NR6V, uh, love the work in progress that you got there on the vehicle. Uh, any closing thoughts from you this week? Thank you, sir. Well, who thought when we started out to do four wind link basic classes we'd be talking about number 100 but it's been really fun and uh look forward to more um as david said you probably have everything or almost everything you need for a portable or mobile wind link station and um you know something as simple as a plastic ammo can or a metal ammo can if you've got a harbor freight near you they put them on sale all the time and you know, we're talking about 15 bucks or less for the case and, you know, put a radio in there. And, and if you've got voice, you're only a few steps away from having digital and, uh, you could make a go box and set the go box on the passenger seat of your car and connect it up. And you've now got a, a mobile wind link set up. So it's not hard to do. And, uh, um, I love doing this stuff because it, it's it's a creative outlet for me, and and uh, um, I've I've built many go boxes, and uh, 
You know, one of the things I, my first go box was similar to the one you showed Chris that inspired you with the nicely cut face plate and uh, David's was the same thing. They're beautiful, but they're very limiting. Once you've got it set up, that's it. You really can't make a lot of changes to it. And over the years, I've evolved into more of a modular concept. And the ammo cans work really nicely for that because you you have one ammo can for an 800 radio, one ammo can for, um, you know, your Winlink portable gateway. And by the way, a portable client station is only software different from a portable gateway. So uh, it's real easy to do. So that's my thinking these days is, is more into a modular and I have them set up on my rack behind me and I grab what I need and don't take a lot of stuff I don't need, hopefully. That's a really smart, uh, smart statement there. When I, as I've been building out my different kits, I started off on the various different kits model. And recently I've built out a couple of Gator boxes specifically for being able to do uh, mobile video production uh, on on the road when we did uh, some of the marathon support. I'm, I'm taking digital to a whole new level, pulling video feeds and so forth and sharing them around and, and really kind of uh, providing that situational awareness. And while it's great to have that really designed out, super built out uh, uh, case, it's really hard to make any changes when, when somebody comes in and they say like, hey, I need to have this X, Y, or Z added to something. And suddenly you've got to be able to, to get down inside of that box to make a cable change or something. I really like the way David had his case set up where he had the back was completely open so you can really get in there and you can access all that equipment. That's really a smart idea. Building it out so it's, everything's locked in is a really hard way to go. And, no. You know, another thing about about David mentioned how his, he's trending away from putting batteries in the boxes. And I sort of am in that place, but I like to have a small battery in the box to get me on the air long enough that I can deploy my larger battery. Um, so it, it's this sort of a hybrid uh, design. Um, I don't like having big batteries because they're, you know, even the bio is a big bio is still extra weight that you don't necessarily need to, to carry around. You know, that's a, that's a great point of that very quickly get yourself up and on the air with a station and then continue to expand out from there. Uh, one of the go boxes that I have, I have a little teeny tiny, you just plug it into the back and it's just a little, basically it's an HT antenna that plugs on the back so you can get that station on the air. And then as the rest of the antennas get deployed and everything gets set up, you're able to expand out your station, swap over antennas and so forth. Yeah, really same thing with antennas. So one one of the cases you showed, um, I think it was the one that inspired you, had a, an antenna port and an antenna mounted right on it. I don't know that I want to spend all day with a 50-watt radio with the antenna, you know, eight inches from my face. But to get you on the air, that's a good a good choice. And then you can deploy, you know, a, a higher gain or a, a, a better deployed antenna. Uh, but to get you on the air um in the event that you need to get up and run net control or whatever it is that that uh, needs to be done quickly yeah what what i found a lot of times is it, we were getting into deployments in the in the bigger boxes that i've built um before the lithium batteries were as cheap and as easily accessible putting a lead acid battery in any of those just it just didn't make sense it you know it instantly doubled the weight of the box which was already a heavy box and i also found that you know, there's two, three, four radios in a box. It's going to take me 20 minutes to set up, set up the uh, the antenna alone uh, without much problem. So I would, um, I I, I kind of tended towards leaving them out and just kind of letting them go that way and and go from there. And you know, um, everybody does it a little bit different, and um, you know, you just kind of work from there. But uh, I do like the idea of having a small battery in there so it's up and ready to go quickly. And what I find most of the time is I just end up like having two HTs that I put on the counter on the on the table while I'm getting set up so I can hear anybody calling net control. And typically for um, for drills or exercises or events that we support, 
we're there far, far in advance before I need to really have it up in air uh, and going. And um, the couple of like real life events that we've, what we've um, encountered, I end up, you know, basically setting up my station right next to my vehicle. And as you saw my vehicle, it's already very capable. So I just turn the volume up on those and hang the antennas, uh, the uh, microphones out the window while I'm getting set up. So if I hear anybody calling, I can hop over, make respond to that and then, and then go from there. Yeah. Great point. Great point on that. Uh, Scott, what's been going on in the chat, uh, both here and on YouTube and uh, any other closing comments from you? Uh, you're on mute. There we go. Yeah, no, I've been, uh, we've been tracking the chat, been posting. So all the links that we posted um, in the chat on both YouTube and in the Zoom session um, go directly to the Amazon store. So make sure you click on those. Um, one thing that was really good to mention, somebody posted in the chat that once you start adding equipment to these gator boxes david you made the same comment they get start getting heavy real fast and they and that draws down the portability of of being able to move these things so one thing that i've done i repurpose pelican cases ones with wheels and build them out it makes it a lot easier to move some of this stuff and granted new pelican cases can cost quite a bit of money um, but once you Find, you can find them used for fairly good prices. Mm -hmm. uh, surplus markets, things like that. You can find pelicans fairly inexpensive. I've repurposed pelicans that were used for ventilators uh, from COVID, and uh, they worked out great, and they were going to get thrown away. Um, so it, it's, it's, it doesn't mean you have to buy the most expensive things, but it, 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 you can make it work fairly easily. And... Um, also, check with the vendors. A lot of these vendors, if you're attached to a governmental agency or part of ARIES or part of an ACS group, a lot of these vendors have discount programs for first responders and governmental agencies. It does not hurt to ask. And a lot of times you'll find that information posted at the bottom of their website called a pro program. And um, so keep that in mind when looking for things to help build your kits out. Um, lots of good things to do. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Scott. And uh, if you're hanging around for the after party, if you're here inside of the Zoom, hang around. Uh, Dan has a, a portable gateway that he's going to be walking through his gateway that he's got set up. Uh, they're going to be walking through that a little bit in the after party. If you ever want to join us for the after party, be sure to go on to wavetalkers.com. Down in the footer of every single page, there's a join us link. Send us, uh, join on to the mailing list. We send out the link uh, usually on Friday, usually on sometimes on Saturday. Uh, that'll get you into the Zoom and into the after party where we, uh, where we open up the mics and allow people to ask questions. And uh, that goes on usually for quite some time. A lot of folks uh, really <laughs> Look forward to, to that portion of the show. Uh, but we will be back here next week for episode number 100. And uh, thanks a lot for, for joining us. 7-3, uh, everybody. We'll see you next week.